Hello and welcome to this week's Market Outlook. This is Jeff Bish, President of Market Gauge, and I'm filling in for Keith this week. So I am going to talk about the uh, the same structure that he usually talks about, but I'm going to focus on a, on a relationship or two that um, is new that's been developing. Now it's August. It's hard to time uh, the market. It can often get slow and just kind of dry up, uh, but... Uh, I wouldn't be so sure that that is going to be the case, uh, given what we're about to see. I think, uh, from my perspective, I like to keep things really simple. And I think the situation that we're trying to assess right now, uh, as we look at the spies, the Qs, and the diamonds, and the IWMs, is the general view of the health of the overall market. And if we look at it on a, a recent swing basis, all the markets made new highs in the last couple of weeks, new swing highs, with the Qs demonstrating that they're the strongest. Now, if we look at the moving averages, I've got the 10 is green, the 20 is red, and the magenta is the 50. So if we look at how each of the indexes are uh, faring relative to the averages, it starts to uh, become a little more clear that we're not all going in the same direction. So a quick assessment, the Dow well under the 10, which is beginning to roll over, IWM under the 10, which is flattening out, SPIs nudging under the 10, which is still got an upward slope on it, and the Qs, the strongest in this category too, not surprising, uh, still above the 10, holding the 10 nicely and looking like absolutely nothing's wrong. If I sum all this up, I see the IWMs, the broadest measure, looking heavy over the last uh, week or so. The Dow looking the heaviest, but it's more concerning to me that the IWM, the broadest measure, is the heaviest, with the Qs looking the strongest. So the question is, is tech uh, really going to start to um, lead in a way that pulls the rest of the market behind it? I'm going to come back to that in a second. I think that, uh, well, I know what I'll be focusing on in the coming week and the coming weeks, if it, if it pans out that way, is where we've got some consolidation over the last couple of days. The direction of this could give us the indication of which way the more immediate market is going to move. Now, the Dow has already broken and testing tested its last uh, swing low. So the Dow is, is really projecting uh, weakness relative to that, but the other three are, I would say, decidedly undecided. So if I box in the Qs, I see this consolidation being the area we have to worry about. If I box in the IWMs, I think the earliest indication is this, the last couple days, and then the swing low here to be concerned with. So again, to summarize, what we want to see if we're a bull is not only the Qs breaking out, but the IWMs breaking out of this box as well. All right. So the question then becomes, uh, is that going to happen? And we can just follow the price action. All right. Simply going to follow the price action there. On the downside, if the IWMs start to break down, I think you've got to uh, be concerned. I've been saying this all this week. I'm, I don't think we're in an environment where you want to buy weakness if the IWMs are weak. All right, That uh, isn't calling a top. It's warning that weakness at this point is not something I would buy. That 50 is not that far away and it could happen relatively quickly. I don't want to be caught in that. And I feel pretty safe that I'm not necessarily going to miss the up move because, as I just said, we can easily see an up move coming, in my opinion, if the IWMs break and the Qs break. And if you want to play from the long side uh, and be aggressive, just play with some of the stronger Qs stocks. Now, here's uh, why I'm not really uh, all that excited about buying weakness. And here's what, how I'm going to assess w how dangerous the weakness is. 
I'm going to pull in a chart, and this is a chart that Keith has uh, shown you here before, and it's a chart of the VIX, and it's a chart of the VIX with Bollinger Bands on it. All right, so the interesting thing about what's going on with the VIX here, from my perspective, um, is one, that the the 50-day moving average of the VIX in this magenta line actually crossed over the 200. Now, this isn't a great timing mechanism, but it's a, it's a heads up in terms of uh, perhaps a longer term uh, shift in the sentiment. What, what we want to be cautious of is rising fear in a declining market. All right, it's very difficult to pick when the capitulation happens, but when you're at a level, which we are, where I would describe it as really complacency, if the VIX hits the bottom of this Bollinger Band, which it did, it's often an indication of near-term complacency, which can lead to weakness in the market. So we've seen that. Um, we've seen a little weakness in the market right, uh, right on cue with that signal. Uh, and it's coming in again in the context of a 50 over the 200. So that makes it a little more uh, concerning. But now what we want to look for is to watch the VIX to see whether or not it continues to move higher. Now another kind of short-term indication uh, to look for a pattern in the VIX is that if you touch the bottom of this Bollinger Band and then come back up through the Bollinger Band line, which is the 20-period moving average, that's some, often uh, somewhat of a timing mechanism to say things could uh, get a little ugly, that the momentum could continue to the upside. That, in other words, the trend of the VIX has shifted from being down to up, and what makes it more interesting is that it's done it after reaching an extreme, which is to hit the, hit the bottom of that Bollinger Band. All of this combine, needs to be combined with the price. So what we want to watch out for is a continuation in the VIX trend up happening in conjunction with the break of this three-day consolidation. This is why I wouldn't buy weakness, all right? We'll buy weakness when we get to more significant support, and we've got a spike in the VIX, VIX that looks more like this. We'll see it happen, all right? But for right now, complacency may have shifted to fear, and fear with a declining market can feed on itself, especially in August. As I said, even if we just come down to the 50-day moving average, which from a big picture point of view would not seem like a big sell-off, it's going to feel like a big sell-off if you're long. So for that reason, uh, I would be careful on weakness. And that's exactly what I'd be looking for to see whether or not the, the weakness may uh, start to feed on itself. Now there's another uh, relationship out there that has caught my attention that is a warning sign for what is the strongest index, right? So the Qs, I just said, is the strongest index, looking great. If all we were looking at were the Qs, I wouldn't see any reason to be all that concerned at this point. However, let's take a look at the SMH. All right, so here's the SMH. I've got a little interesting uh, relationship going here. And here's, here's the premise of this. The SMH and the Qs shouldn't diverge greatly. I don't, I'm not looking at little minutia divergences. I'm looking at the fact that the SMH is about to break down vis-a-vis -vis its 50-day moving average. The Qs are well above their 50-day moving average. So if the SMH breaks down, and we can use this swing level right here, if the SMH breaks down and it's accompanied by weakness in the Qs, then I would not expect the SMH breakdown to be a, a head fake to the downside. I'd expect it to continue, and I'd expect that the Qs will be putting in a top that 
I would say right now is not expected. All right, and again, that top, I don't know if that top resolves itself down to the 50-day moving average. I don't know if it resolves itself down to the 200-day moving average. But historically, if you get these kinds of divergences, and I'm going to show you a couple of examples, where SMH is just way out in front of the Qs in a direction, it's a negative sign. And the, Q, and the SMH is lining up really nice here for that indication. A new swing low on a daily basis in the SMH with weakness in the Qs, just like that VIX is telling me this is not the dip to buy right now. It could get a little uglier than people are expecting. That said, all right, SMH is at great, great uh, support here. And if SMH takes off and if Qs take off, do not argue with this market. Um, it's hard to predict when a, a market that has this much momentum uh, is going to top out. So I'm not going to, I don't have to do that. I'm going to wait for it to start to break. And unlike prior breaks, I'm not going to run in and be a buyer quickly. I'm going to let it go, going to get short, I'm going to play it as if the break can continue. All right, so here's why, or here's further evidence of what can happen. The, the situation we're looking at has happened a couple times in the past. So let's go back to um, October of 2012 in the queues. And I've highlighted this so I can get there efficiently. And we've got a very, we had a very similar situation to what we have right now, right? If you take a look, the Qs up here are trading well above their 50-day um, moving average. If I scrunch this down a little, you'll see that the Qs were actually uh, taking out significant highs, looking pretty good, but at the same time, the SMH was telling you that it was playing a whole different, playing to a whole different tune, all right? Just dramatically weaker. I'm not, like I said, I'm not talking about little minor divergences. These are major divergences. And the way you time this is you're, you're trading the cues and you're saying if the Qs get weak here, it's not weakness to buy because SMH is telling me this weakness is going to be uh, more prolonged. So we have the same scenario if we go to the July time frame in 2011. All right, I've got them both highlighted here. And again, you can see Qs pushing up against uh, significant highs, looking strong on the uh, basis of over the 50, over the 200, but SMH was uh, doing exactly the opposite. It was collapsing. Okay, so as soon as the Qs start to roll over here, you already know from the SMH this is problematic, and my suggestion for right now is that we have the same scenario, and um, we don't know that the Qs are going to roll over, it, they could do another push higher. I have some other uh, indications or cyclical stuff that suggests maybe this market has a little bit more to squeeze out of it. But I trade the price. If the Q's price goes down, breaks the, the, the lows of yesterday, starts yesterday, of last week, starts trading under the 10-day uh, moving average, given what I just said about the IWMs, given what I just said about the VIX, um, I would be concerned. So, a couple of other interesting charts uh, that may take um, shape that Keith has been talking about. Let's take a look at the TLTs and you know Keith's been talking about this, but here's a here's a really um, big picture here of TLTs. And I want to focus your attention on a couple of things. First of all, um, the area that the TLTs are in right now has been significant in the past. Here, there as support, and here is both support and resistance. This is how I'm getting this zone, so it's not surprising to see it uh, stop in here. It would have been, um, I would say, more expected to see it stop here, 
holding these levels, but it definitely has gotten, I think, a little bit ahead of itself. It's consolidating now. And I, here the key from a longer term perspective is you've got this channel. This is a valid trend line and a kind of an ex, a tightened channel, which is a horizontal line and a, a, uh, the real channel here. If I'm looking at the big picture from a bullish point of view, don't really expect to get bullish until we get back into that channel area. That's from a, a weekly point of view. But as I said, it's um, not surprising that it's holding here from a uh, big picture point of view. Now, if we drill down into the daily chart, and Keith went over this in pretty good detail last week, I'm just going to pretty much follow up um, what he already started, which was um, we spiked the TLTs, uh, really spiked. Let me get the right color. TLTs broke down on this through this last swing uh, low pretty significantly. Uh, but what they did this week is they recovered it. All right, so the momentum here uh, looks like it may have uh, turned to the upside. And so if it does start trading over the 10 day and move higher, it really has not done that since the breakdown. So that would be a first. It, had, it made a, a, a feeble attempt uh, here, but that's what I'd look for, some positive action now continuing, and this looks like it could be a short-term low. Now, how does this relate to the stocks? One interesting relationship you might look out for is the idea that the uh, bonds might actually be seen as a flight to safety. If the stocks start to sell off and bonds start to rally, it could it, it could easily be an indication that again uh, we're in a scenario where the fear in the stocks that we have not seen is coming in, and money is flowing to safety in the TLTs. Now, that would seem rather strange to hear, given the fact that the general prevailing wisdom right now is that bonds are not safe anymore and uh, the rates are too low and they've, and they've got to rise higher. So if all of a sudden we start seeing price action and relationships where it's suggesting that money is flowing back into the TLTs, we've got a structure in the market here that's suggesting short-term bottom, a sentiment that if it comes in as flight to safety would really uh, bode negatively for stocks and could get TLTs running as a good trade to the upside. Long term, I don't think this is where you want to be on the long side. Short term could be an interesting um, day and swing trade opportunity. And it's also got the component worth watching for that um, factor of is it moving because people are actually running to safety. So keep your eyes open for that. Uh, one last uh, chart, or I'll say market that I'll cover, gold. Keith covered this last week. Uh, I've got uh, some more stuff to add uh, based on the today's or this week's action and some other um, points to uh, just bring to your attention. Now, last week, Keith made the uh, very important point that here's the 50, the, the magenta, and the gold has been flagging nicely, consolidating right along that 50. We even have a trend line now that got uh, held the market in on Friday. Uh, so this in and of itself is an interesting pattern since gold has not been above the 50. Actually, it hasn't been above the 50s all year. So to break out above the 50 in such a uh, beat up environment, and I'll, I'll show you just how beat up in a second, would be an interesting break by itself. But again, the structure here is also interesting. And these are the lines that I've got drawn. And a really significant breakdown. Here's your pause. It found some support there for a couple days. And then an, another uh, breakdown. And then we had a reversal day. Keith really nailed this. Uh, Mish nailed that as well for the swing traders. Um, and from that low, the market rallied back up into the resistance. And now it's come down and tested this level. And if you look closely, I've actually drawn in the fact that you've got uh, a island bottom 
down here. Now, gold is a is a really a 24-hour market, and this GLD is not reflecting 24-hour um, action. But nonetheless, you've got this island um, type bottom in here, which most importantly, the market has rallied from tested the support of so the break of the trend line the break of the 50 you've also got the break of this trend line are all coming into play right here so gold the uh, the metal that hasn't been shining very nicely recently kind of like the TLTs would be interesting to see if this uh, breaks even if it's just a bear market rally could be uh, vicious in terms of a uh, great opportunity to trade it now uh, it's not just the price structure here. I'm going to bring in a chart that uh, setup that Keith has shown you last week. Gold at some interesting levels here, and that being uh, the weekly RSI really uh, oversold, and that's the bounce point. But look at the monthly. Okay, the monthly in the gold is at the 80-month moving average. It's an average we like to look at. And so from a big picture point of view um, and an oversold level on a monthly basis, it's as oversold as it's been uh, in this case since 2005 and I don't even go back beyond that. So it's it's definitely been wrung out. Um, been wrung out on the RSI on a monthly basis, daily and weekly. One last thing uh, while I'm on this particular chart, the TLTs also happen to have an interesting uh, situation with respect to this. TLT is getting close to that 80 monthly that is often such a good level and also uh, right down near the 200 week, which I think Keith also covered last week. So gold TLTs both at... Um, uh, good places to expect a bottom given where stocks are potentially uh, looking vulnerable to a top. All these th three things together could make for a very interesting August, if not a very interesting next couple weeks. I hope that uh, helps, and I'll see you in the next video.